Happy New Year! This is Andrew at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center, and this is Fossil Friday. Now, I know we all celebrated the New Year well over a month ago in January, but that's based on the Gregorian calendar, which was popularized here in the western part of the world. In China, they're celebrating the New Year tonight because it's based on the lunar calendar, the phases of the moon. So things are a little different over in China than they are here in the States where we celebrate New Year's a little differently. But that doesn't mean that a lot of things aren't similar between us. That's certainly true today, and it was certainly true millions of years ago. So right now, I'm in the section of the museum I like to call Island Asia because that's where we have a number of replicas of Chinese and Mongolian dinosaurs. And what's really Really cool about these guys is that there's a lot of similarities between them. Maybe not superficially when you look at them at first, but as you look closer you can see a lot of things that actually reflect traits we see here. So let's go back and do some history in this context. So everyone knows about Pangaea, the massive supercontinent that once joined all the continents together in the one giant landmass. Now when the dinosaurs began to take hold across the globe, Pangaea was beginning to break up into two giant supercontinents, Gondwana and Laurasia. And what's really interesting is that this kind of had an effect on how dinosaurs diversified and evolved over time. We see different things happening on both sides of the planet, on both of these supercontinents. Now North America would have been pretty close to China during that time, so we see lots of similarities between the two. Example, well let's see, here at the Dinosaur Center we work in the Morrison Formation. That's around 146 to 150 million years ago. And in those deposits we see things like big sauropods, brontosaurus, brachiosaurus, diplodocus. We see theropods, allosaurus, and ceratosaurus. And of course we see more bizarre dinosaurs like a Stegosaurus and its relatives. Well, in China, at the same time, in their corresponding layers, the same period, late Jurassic, we see similar animals. So, example, we have a sauropod here, Bellosaurus, a very small sauropod, but still small head, long neck, big bulky body, big plant eater. Pretty similar in a lot of ways to the plant eaters we see here in the hills of Wyoming. Conversely, we see lots of meat-eating dinosaurs, like this monolophosaurus, who's inviting Bellosaurus over for uh, New Year's Eve dinner, if you will. Very similar to something like Allosaurus. Large head, recurved teeth, large claws, and long arms. And then, of course, over here, the all-too-familiar tail and spikes of Tuojongosaurus, which is very similar to what we see in Stegosaurus. So just because they're on different sides of the globe, doesn't mean that they're entirely different. We see the corresponding animals, the same types, filling the same roles in their environment as we see in North America at the same time. And that continues, which brings me to this spectacular thing. This is a replica of a China, or Mongolian rather, Tyrannosaur called Aliaramus. Now, this is a replica, of course. If it were real, I wouldn't dare be this cavalier with it as I'm holding it. But Aliaramus is a relative of the Tyrannosaurus from around 70 million years ago. And you can see some of the similarities. It's got a very long snout, recurved teeth. And if you look at it head on, the snout is very narrow in the front and widens as you go further back. That's a trait that we see in Tyrannosaurus as well. It concentrates all of the power of the jaws towards the front, giving it a massive, powerful, crunching bite. Now, is Aliaramus exactly the same as T-Rex? Well, no, of course not. It's quite a bit smaller. And there actually was another Tyrannosaur called Tarvosaurus that was extremely similar to T-Rex. But the point is they were living at the same time in pretty similar environments, or in some cases very different environments but different parts of the globe with the same creatures. We see this throughout the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. And what's really cool is that it happens in the Southern Hemisphere as well. We see the same types of animals growing and evolving and being dominant. Good example of that, well, sauropods largely disappeared at the end of the Jurassic period in northern continents, in Gondwana, in Laurasia. We see sauropods thriving right up until the very end of the Cretaceous period. Why this is the case? Well, we're not entirely sure, but it just goes to show that sometimes when you study geologic time and geologic history and the changes of animals, you see lots of similarities and lots of differences. So. It's really all the same, but in a very different kind of way. That's kind of a convoluted way to go about ending this, but we're gonna wrap up this episode for now. So, 
Hope you enjoy your weekend, everyone. Happy Chinese New Year. We hope you like this video. Hope you'll share it and leave a comment. Tell us what you think of it. But until then, well, I think I'm going to enjoy my second New Year as well. So this is Andrew at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center keeping your Friday fossiliferous. Right, let's go put you back now. <laughs>